Hi there. My name is Ms. Tomashow. Um, my students usually call me Ms. T for short. I am a teacher at Hazel Wolf Elementary School, and I really, really love teaching reading and thinking about reading. Um, so I'm excited to teach you this Making Meaning lesson today. Um, I want to welcome you into my classroom. This is actually a corner of the playroom of my house. Um, as I'm teaching this, my eight-year-old daughter, Juniper, is drawing and painting over on the other side of the playroom next to me, and my 18-month-old is taking a nap. Um, so learning and teaching looks and feels a lot different these days, but it's so important that we keep doing it and that even though we're not in our classrooms, we're still letting our brains grow and sharing ideas with each other um, and thinking hard ourselves. So I'm excited to be doing that with you today. Um, I want to let you know that there are some times throughout the lesson today when you will be thinking about ideas and then talking about ideas. When it's time to talk about those ideas, I um, even if it may feel a little bit silly or a little bit uncomfortable, I still would like you to talk them. You can talk them to a family member, a pet, a stuffed animal, or just the invisible person that you imagine standing next to you. Um, it's just important to say the things that you're thinking out loud. Often it helps you expand on your ideas and it helps you remember those ideas also. There will be also times today that I'm going to ask you to write your ideas. So if you don't have one already next to you, please take a moment to get yourself a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper. If you have the packets from the district, then there should be a place in that packet for you to take notes today. Um, so go ahead and take a moment to get the things that you need. Ready? Okay. Um, so on your piece of paper or in your packet, find, well, if you're on a piece of paper, if you're writing your own, then please make yourself a chart that says, think, talk, write about a picture book of Amelia Earhart. If you are using the packets from the district, then you can find the page in your packet that says this on it. And we're gonna be using this chart today to write down some ideas we have about a book that we read in the last lesson called A, P a Picture Book of Amelia Earhart. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera back and forth when it's time to write down some ideas. Okay, so let's get started. Just take a moment to think about what you remember about a picture book of Amelia Earhart. And maybe you're like me and you remember that Amelia Earhart was a woman who did things that were kind of unexpected of women at that time. And because of that, she made, um, she made a lot of new ideas. She kind of like challenged ideas about women during her time. Maybe you remember that she's a woman who really loved to fly. Maybe you remembered some other things. Last week in your lessons, you worked on identifying important ideas and supporting details to help you make sense of the text. Um, this is an important skill because it's difficult to remember every single detail and every single word of what you read. So as you read, good readers and strong readers think about what ideas are the most important to understand and remember. And just taking that moment to think about what the most important idea is really helps your brain understand the book that you're reading and enjoy the book as well. So today we're going to read the first half of this book again, and we're going to practice thinking about and writing some of those important ideas. So as I read, I'll stop sometimes and have you think, talk, and write about those important ideas in the part you just heard. And I'll model this for you at the first step. Okay, a picture book of Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart, Earhart was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24th, 1897. Her parents were Edwin Earhart, a lawyer for a railroad, and Amy Earhart, the daughter of a wealthy judge. In 1900, the Earharts had a second daughter, Muriel. Amelia was not a quiet schoolgirl. She threw mud balls, jumped over fences, played baseball and football, and shot her own 22 rifle to rid the family's barn of rats. When she was seven, she made her own roller coaster using fence rails and a pair of old roller skates. 
Although other girls their age wore long ruffled dresses, Amelia and Muriel Earhart often wore loose-fitting pants called bloomers. The Earhart girl's behavior was shocking to some people. But Amelia wrote later, some elders have to be shocked for everybody's good now and then. So let's stop here. This would be a good place to stop and think about an important idea that you've heard. So I'm gonna show you how I might do that. Um, I'm thinking that an important idea from this page is that Amelia did things like play baseball and football and wear pants. And the reason I think this is an important idea is because I think it's kind of giving us an idea about what Amelia might be like later on in her life. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, now that I have that important idea that I've identified, I'm gonna write it down on my chart. Get my marker. Okay, so my important idea is I think An important idea is that Amelia did things that boys were expected to do. Go ahead and take a moment to write that note down in your chart as well. All right, and we're gonna keep going with the book. But Amelia wrote later, some elders have to be shocked for everybody's good now and then. Amelia was 11 years old when she first saw an airplane. It was 1908, five years after the Wright brothers made the first successful flight. Amelia wrote later that at the time, she thought it was just a thing of rusty wire and wood, not at all interesting. After high school, Amelia went to the Ogont School in Pennsylvania. Amelia was tall and thin. In a letter to her parents from school, she drew a sketch of herself dressed in a suit with a pleated skirt and wrote, I look like a broomstick wrapped round and round. And she wrote, did I tell you I have a reputation for brains? Amelia spent night Christmas 1917 with her sister in Toronto, Canada. There she saw soldiers who had returned from the First World War. Years later, she wrote, for the first time, I realized what the World War meant. Instead of new uniforms and brass bands, I saw only the results of four years desperate struggle men without arms and legs, men who were paralyzed, and men who were blind. Soon after the holiday, Amelia quit school. She went back to Toronto, became a nurse's aide, and cared for the war wounded. While Amelia was in Toronto, she went to a nearby airfield and had another look at the airplanes. Some years later, she explained that, though I had seen one or two at county fairs before, I now saw many of them. I hung around in my spare time and absorbed all I could. So let's stop for a moment here. What is an important idea in the part you just heard? Go ahead and think in your head and then talk it. And then when you're ready, write down a note of what the most important idea you just heard was. Maybe you were thinking something like the most important idea you just heard was that Amelia discovered that she was really interested in airplanes. I think this idea might be important because the cover is showing her underneath an airplane um, and I'm wondering if that becomes a big deal for her life. So I think, and maybe you thought something different was an important idea, that's fine too. What's important, I'm saying the word important a lot, what's important is that you are able to explain why your idea was important using reasons from the texts. So I think an important idea is that 
whatever you believe. And then just be able to say to yourself or think to yourself, I think this idea is important because, and back it up with a reason. Okay, I think an important idea is that Amelia started being really interested in airplanes. Maybe you had a different idea. That's all right. Make sure you've jotted your idea down, and then we'll move on to the next page. I hung around in my spare time and absorbed all I could. After the war, Amelia studied automobile engine repair. The next year, she took courses in New York City at Columbia University and Barnard College. At first, she was preparing to study medicine. Later, she decided to do medical research. After the school year ended, Amelia went to be with her parents who had moved to California. On Christmas Day, 1920, she went to an air show and three days later, she paid $1 for a 10 minute airplane ride. As soon as I left the ground, she wrote later, I knew I myself had to fly. In January 1921, Amelia took her first flying lesson. In July, she bought her first airplane. She paid for the lessons and airplane with money she earned working for the Los Angeles Telephone Company and with money given and loaned to her by her mother and sister. Flying wasn't as safe then as it is today. Airplanes were powered by small engines. Amelia had several crash landings. Once she was thrown into an open field. Another time, her airplane turned over in heavy rain and Amelia, held in by her safety belt, hung upside down. So let's stop again here. What is another important idea in the part you just heard? What is the most important idea you think that is um, important to understand and remember? And once you have that important idea, go ahead and think about it and then talk it. And once you finish talking it, write it down on your chart. And I'm going to think about this as well. Maybe like me, you're thinking the important idea is that Amelia discovered that she loves flying. And I think that might be important because she goes on to be a pilot. So that's when she first realized how much she loved it. I think an important idea you can write while I'm writing is that Amelia found out she loves to fly. Once you're finished writing, I'm going to keep reading. Another time her airplane turned over in heavy rain and Amelia, held in by her safety belt, hung upside down. In 1924, Amelia's parents divorced. She sold her airplane and bought a yellow sports car and drove her mother east to their new home in Medford, Massachusetts. Sam Chapman, a chemical engineer, followed Amelia east. Chapman wanted Amelia to marry him, but Amelia refused to become what she called a domestic robot. At the time, she said, I don't want to marry anyone. On weekdays, Amelia had a job as a social worker in a community center in nearby Boston, teaching English to immigrant children. On weekends, she flew for sport and as a saleswoman for an airplane builder. In May 1927, Charles Lindbergh became the first to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. The next year, Amelia Earhart became the first woman to make the flight. She was co-passenger aboard an airplane named Friendship. In June 1928, Amelia, Bill Stoltz, and Slim Gordon climbed into the Friendship. It was painted orange, so it would be easy to find in case of an accident, and was fitted with pontoons, so if they couldn't complete the trip, they could land on the ocean. Before the trip, Amelia telegraphed her mother, don't worry, no matter what happens, it will have been worth the trying. 
While Stoltz flew the plane, Amelia checked maps and kept a record of their speed and altitude. She also looked out the window at clouds she described as marvelous shapes in white. She was, she wrote, gulping beauty. On June 18, 1928, after 20 hours and 40 minutes in the air, the plane, land, the plane landed in the water in the harbor of Burryport, Wales. Amelia described the flight as a grand experience, but since she didn't pilot the plane, she said she felt like baggage. So let's stop again here. What's an important idea in the part you just read? What is most important to understand and remember? Go ahead and think about it and then talk about it. And after you've talked, write it down in your chart. And I'm thinking an important idea from this part is that Amelia decided she didn't want to just ride in airplanes, she wanted to fly airplanes. I did lose my marker. I'm not sure how that happened. I have another one right here. So I think an important idea is that Amelia didn't like just being a passenger. And I think this is important because it shows some of Amelia's personality. It shows that she doesn't want to just ride in the planes. She wants to fly them. She wants to do the work herself. Okay, so that's all we're going to read today. We practiced identifying important ideas and writing about them. In the next lesson, we'll think more about important ideas in the rest of this book, a picture book of Amelia Earhart. And it's time now for IDR. So during IDR today, I'd like you to read for 30 minutes. I'd like you to find a good spot to read where you know that you can stay focused and really do the important thinking work that I'd like you to do and that's gonna make you a stronger reader. Um, as you are reading, please stop every once in a while, every two or three pages or every chunk of text, and really think about what are the important ideas that you just, in what you just read. Um, what do you think are the most important ideas to understand and remember, and why do you think those ideas are so important? At the end of your reading, please think about one of those important ideas that you read and share it with a family member send a note to your teacher, um, or write it down in your packet and talk about why that idea is important. So I'm gonna be doing that. With the same book I read yesterday, Malala, A Brave Girl from Pakistan. And I'm just gonna stop every couple of pages. I'll show you. Who is Malala? The Taliban fighter demands looking into the school van. Malala is a girl who isn't afraid. I will power myself with knowledge, she says. Don't go to school, the Taliban fighters tell the girls in Swat Valley. Don't read, they say. The girls don't listen. They are brave girls. So that was a chunk of text. I'm gonna stop now and think what's an important idea in what I read. And I think an important idea is that in this place that I'm reading about, um, there were people who believed that girls shouldn't go to school um, but some girls decided to anyways. I think that's important because I think what we're going to learn more about is um, maybe the dangers that they faced and how these girls continued to be brave. So I'll keep doing that as I read during IDR and when I'm finished with my reading I'll choose one of those ideas to write down um, and to share with someone. I know that it's hard to do some of this work when you're not in the classroom. I really think it's so amazing and so awesome that you're pushing yourselves to do this learning anyways. Um, even when we're in school, our teachers can't make us think and our teachers can't make us learn. We have to do that work for ourselves. And that's what makes us really powerful thinkers and really powerful workers. Um, and so I think it's amazing that you're doing that and I encourage you to keep doing it even when it feels weird and even when it feels hard. Um, 
it's it's going to make your brain so much more powerful and your heart so much more powerful and it's going to make you feel good about yourselves. So thank you so much for being a part of this lesson today and I'll see you next time.